Hey everybody, welcome back to the FNAF Iceberg. If you didn't see the previous part, I would recommend go watching that. This is a direct continuation. In fact, I'm actually recording this a minute after I ended the recording for the last video. I'm just splitting them up into smaller, more digestible parts. So please go watch the first one if you haven't seen it, and I hope you enjoy this continuation. So, here we are again with the FNAF Iceberg, and we're gonna continue in the um, Toy Chica section apparently. Uh, so, let's get right into it. Sister Location takes place under FNAF 4. Pretty well known fact, um, if you look at um, maps that and like diagrams that can be seen in the game, uh, you'll see that Sister Location is actually connected to and directly underneath the FNAF 4 house, which is presumably William Afton's house, I believe. Nextly, Obscured Graphics. What? Obscured graphics. There's lots of obscured graphics in FNAF. What is that referring to? Obscure graphics? This is obscured graphics. Obscured duh. Oh, when Toy Bunny is it just referring to when Toy Bunny slides into your like in front of your face in FNAF 2? Why is it worded as obscured graphics? I, I'm not so sure about that one. So guess that's another loss of a point for me. Plus trap prize jump scare. What? Oh my god, am I gonna lose two in a row? Oh, oh, okay. So it's talking about, yeah, in FNAF VR, in the, in the prize, like, corner area, if you did a thing, you could get plus trap to jump scare you. Okay, I didn't, I just had a big brain fart on that one. Mr. Hippo's long stories. Okay, so in Ultimate Custom Night, if you died to Mr. Hippo, he would tell you these, like, ten minute long soliloquies about, like, his life and, like, it, it, it just sounds like an old man giving life, life advice and there's a lot of jokes in it. Like, he talks about how the fact, like, you should try lemonade and iced tea. Oh, wait, you can't. You're dead. It, 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 it's hilarious. I, those are, the, those are good. How is that lower down than like sister location takes place underneath FNAF 4. Like that's pretty well known. I don't know. Uh, 395248. Okay, so this is the hex color code for the purple that purple guy has backwards and it's also the code that you punch into the wall in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 <clears throat> in order to access the uh, stage 01 minigame and it's also my cell phone password. <laughs> Puppet hallucinations. Is this referring to, in FNAF 1, there would be posters on the wall that looked an awful lot like the puppet? And did they were like these hallucinations that showed up? Is that what it's talking about? I think so. I hope so. Um, candy Cadet Stories. Oh, so in um, FNAF 6, uh, Pizzeria Simulator, the um, Candy Cadet, who is a character in there, would occasionally, on rare occasion, tell you these weird disturbing stories that all had a common theme of five things becoming one thing whether it be five cats being sewn together five orphans being buried in one coffin uh five keys being melted down into one key to free a bunch of orphans i think they're, they're really disturbing stories and apparently they have some big lore implications if you didn't know funko leaks oh, okay so funko pop the company that makes these little vinyl figures had a habit of showing off their product before the games had shown it off so there's been a lot of leaks from Funko about games or like FNAF future content like before it was actually shown to the public and they've made several whoopsies like that um spring trap in the newspaper oh, okay so in FNAF 3 after you beat the game and everything burns down and you get the newspaper if you brighten it up you can see spring trap in the background meaning that he escaped that's pretty easy missing paper plate is this referring to, in FNAF 2, there were these three little paper plate guys on the wall and sometimes there's, there'd only be two? Is that what it's talking about? I'm not entirely certain about that one. Huh. Rick Astley. Oh, okay, so in Sister Location, when you get one of the two endings and you get your innards scooped out and replaced with innards, um, the, the, you look in the mirror and the silhouette that is you is rumored to be Rick Astley. Like, apparently the hair and body shape is a direct match, so that's pretty funny. Rare boot images. Okay, so on extremely rare occasion when you boot up, I believe it's the first three uh, FNAF games, you'll get these 
interesting boot screens that show up that have these weird disturbing images that gave lore hints like for example in FNAF 3 um, in FNAF 3 you would get these images and this is the most famous one because it showed us that there's somebody inside of Springtrap it's which at the time was absolutely fucking horrifying and terrible and yeah they gave lore hints like that um fnaf 2 was a little more tame fnaf 3 is the most famous ones but um fnaf 2 is a little more tame it often just had images of the animatronics with no eyes fnaf 1 even had some i believe this is one of the fnaf 1 ones and uh that would have been extremely scary to boot up the game in fnaf 1 when we knew so little about these things and to see that that would have scared me, especially considering I was how old at the time? Like, eight or something like that? Uh, anyway. Uh, Toy Chica in the office. Okay, so basically in the game files for FNAF 2, there's this scrapped sequence of Toy Chica coming across your face in the office, much like uh, Toy Bonnie does. Uh, it wasn't used for one reason or another. There's actually a video out there of somebody who recovered it and tried to play it, but apparently it's recorded at a really low frame rate or something, so nobody knows how trustworthy it is, but it is in the game files, the scrap sequence, so yeah, whether it be a rumor or not, that's what that is. Handprint on, on Freddy's face. Okay, so in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, uh, FNAF 1 Freddy and FNAF 2 Withered Freddy, there's this weird looking smudge on Freddy's head that roughly looks like a handprint and um, that was, people tried to pick apart, like, what does this mean? But it could very well be just, like, somebody handling the Freddy head. Like, we, we were not sure what it meant, but that's what that was. Big Bug, a very cool person. He was the first person to beat 2020-2020 uh, mode in FNAF 1, which at the time was seen as this big, impossible thing. Um, not so much anymore, considering, like, 11-year-old me beating on my phone at 6 a.m. at my aunt's house. But back then, this was a really big deal, so big congrats to Big Bug for being the first ever person to do that. Um, Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. Okay, so this is a really cool thing Scott Cawthon did where he provided proper, he provided funding and a bunch of other tools to specific um, FNAF fan games to help them push their game out more, and it was really done. I think they did one for Five Nights at Candies, I think they did one for Pop Goes, and I'm unfortunately i can't quite remember what the others were but yeah that's what that was very cool uh now we're in the power usage bar section fifth power usage bar okay i'm gonna go speed fire on this one because this looks like a pretty i'm just skimming through here this looks like a pretty easy section and then we'll probably end at the next section down here fifth power usage bar in fnaf one if you had everything going as at once both doors closed and you turned a light on and then you open the camera for like a split second a fifth power usage bar would appear which normally isn't supposed to vanessa mask okay so in fnaf uh, vr help wanted there's this like you see this uh, vanny mask or vanessa mask that's like this weird rabbit thing and supposedly she's being controlled by william afton somehow i think Puppet in FNAF 1 location. Okay, so in the, um, I think I talked about this before, in the, the posters would appear on the wall that vaguely resembled the puppet, and that proves that he was always there, or whatever. Uh, Fred Bear and Friends in 1983. Okay, so in FNAF 4, if you look at the TV, there's a TV show that says it's from 1983 called Fred Bear and Friends, and it has Fred Bear, Spring Bonnie, and I think it's got Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and Foxy, I think. Maybe it doesn't have Spring Bonnie, I'm not sure. Beta designs for the fun times. Okay, so if you look at the uh, building Freddy and Foxy sections in Sister Location, you can see their almost finished designs, which are a bit different. Like, for example, Fun Time Freddy doesn't have a Bon Bon puppet. It was a bit more pink. And Fun Time Foxy was just a little bit more pink, I think. Or a little bit more purple, it would have been. Um, they were almost the same, but not quite. Button inconsistencies. <clears throat> button like control oh, oh 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 it's talking about um on the animatronics they have like buttons like clothing buttons on them and that was a way to tell like which version of freddy or bonnie or whatever this is if, like how many buttons they had same with like the toes if you remember back in the day is how many toes does foxy have this will tell us what version of foxy he was it's kind of a bit interesting lives okay so in the game files for the first three fnaf games there's an abandoned lives counter that presumably would have been used for a live system that was once scrapped i'm not sure how a live system would have worked but um i i imagine it would have worked like 
maybe if you died, you would get to start over from that night again. And maybe if you lost all three of your lives, you'd have to start back from night one, which would have been super annoying. Drowning in the lake, easy. In the ultimate custom night, <clears throat> um, you can go see Old Man Consequences, who tells you, like, leave his demons to his demons over... Oh, wait, no, no, no. Th that's not what this is. This is in FNAF World, I think. You can enter the... When you go to see Old Man Consequences in FNAF World, I think you can enter the lake, or... Is this Ultimate Custom Night FNAF World? And one of the two, when you go see Old Man Consequences, you can enter the lake and, like, drown inside of it, and that triggers a sequence. I'm having trouble remembering exactly what happens, but I do know what that's talking about. Mediocre Melodies Whispers. Okay, when you get killed by the Mediocre Melodies, usually there's some, like, stupid, sarcastic line, but occasionally they'll say something really serious, and you can hear it being repeated in the background by a soft, whispering voice that is presumably the one you should not have killed. Buff Helpy. It's a meme in the FNAF community about Helpy, who's the tiny little Helpy uh, bear that was introduced in FNAF 6, being super big and buff, kind of like Buff Suki from the Doki Doki Literature Club community. Toxic Song. Um, in FNAF World, there is an abandoned attack called Toxic Song that presumably would have been used by some of the Phantom animatronics. Night 8. In FNAF 4, 2020 mode is Night 8, because Night 7 is the Nightmare Night. Illusion Discs. This was a theory that is backed up by the books, where there's these little discs that cause illusions that presumably allow certain animatronics like Baby to shapeshift into looking like a human, and presumably you take one out of um, Funtime Freddy in a sister location, like that little blinking thing there is supposedly an illusion disc, even though it's called the power source, it's weird. Curse Haunting, another abandoned FNAF world thing, it was one of those chips that you could get, and it haunting... I'm not sure, nobody's really sure what it would have done, but it was an abandoned asset. Freddy Bear, we talked about this in the first video I made, um, was the original name, oh wait, no, Freddy Bear, sorry, Freddy Bear was the original name for Freddy Fazbear, almost the same, not quite, because um, it was supposed to be like Teddy Bear, do, do you get it? And then Yellow Bear, this is what we talked about in the last video, was the original name for Golden Freddy before the community made up the term Golden Freddy and then latched onto that and so did Scott. Okay, so this will be the last section we do for this video, speed round over. FNAF 1 was meant to be Scott's last game. Okay, well this is a pretty quick one. Um, it's self-explanatory, but it is true. FNAF 1 was supposed to be Scott's last attempt at creating a video game, but it blew up and became a massive franchise, and Scott and his family are now set for life because of it, and I think that's a really cool thing. Bonnie and Chica Height Oversight. I think this is referring to inconsistencies between the heights of the animatronics. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Sister Location Blueprints. Okay, so there was these hidden things in the Sister Location files that had blueprints for the animatronics, and it revealed a lot of important facts, like how these things are massive, coming at over 8 feet in some cases, and how, like, Funtime Freddy has, like, a cavity in his chest for storing children. It's, it's incredibly disturbing, very important for the lore. Yendo. Okay, so... Yendo appeared in FNAF Sister Location Custom Night, and he would appear when you dropped your monitor, and he was a bare endoskeleton, but like, it was a Sister Location endoskeleton, so it was a bit more formed than the normal endoskeletons that you'd see, and he would drop your oxygen a bunch, and obviously the name Endo at the end there comes from the endoskeleton. There's some uh, theories as to where the Y comes from, but some people think it's yellow, and maybe like Yellow Bear, like Golden Freddy, and maybe that's Golden Freddy's endoskeleton, considering he doesn't appear in Sister Location, so possibly. Movie ripoffs. Um, there was a couple movies that have been released that people are like, this is FNAF! I think there's one called, like, um, something's Mystery Play Place, or something like that, but um, people... It made by like Warner Brothers, and people think that these movies were made because they were given the FNAF script, it was rejected, but then they adapted it to this other thing, and it's a whole series. Scott is self-taught, also self-explanatory. If you didn't know, Scott Cawthon didn't really take any lessons, he's entirely self-taught. Fright Dome. Okay, so this is a thing that was done for a few people a while ago, where they made a in-real-life Five Nights at Freddy's attraction that some FNAF YouTubers were invited to, and I think some other people went, and it was really cool, and that's about all I know about it, but, um, yeah, here, let me look it up real quick. FNAF, Fright, Dome. I spelled that wrong. Um, Fright Dome. FNAF Wiki. 
Yeah, walk through horror attraction located in Circus Circus of Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, so it was it was just a cool event hosted by Circus Circus apparently. Princess Quest. Okay, so in the mobile version of I think FNAF VR, possibly there was a, a secret mini game called Princess Quest that was only available in the uh, mobile version, I believe. FNAF 3 Cupcake. Okay, so in FNAF 3, there was, um, in one of the nights, there were four cupcakes that, cupcakes that you had to click in an order, and then it would unlock a secret minigame called Chica's Party something, I think. Um, Phantom Mangle and Happiest Day Absent from Extras. Right, so I think in FNAF 3, in the Extras menu, uh, Phantom Mangle isn't one of the animatronics, and Happiest Day isn't one of the minigames you can play. Which is interesting. I think a Phantom Mangle not being there might have just been a mistake on Scott's part. And I think Happiest Day being upset was intentional because it's a very important lore thing and you only can unlock that minigame if you're doing the good ending, so. Argumentative standards elevation passive heights. Okay, this is gonna require some explanation. Basically, um, in FNAF sister location, when the um when the angsty teen is doing his thing and you shock Valora, there's some really weird noise that plays. And if you slow that down, reverse it, and do a whole bunch of audio editing, the words that come out of it that come out of it are argumentative, standards, elevation, passive, heights. Um, people have tried to decode what on earth that means. Uh, there's other theories as to what they say, um, like heights has also been uh, proposed to be lights, and using that you could spell out the word please with the first letters of the name. Uh, or the word help, if you something else was an L and something else was a P. Like, I forget exactly, but people have tried to make it mean something. We have no clue what it means for sure. Mike, it's a very important name in the series. First of all, Mike Schmidt in the first name is the security guard you play as. It's the name that appears above the keypad in sister location. And there's also Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, who is the literal purple guy who does not murder children, versus his father, William Afton, who's the metaphorical purple guy who does murder children. And he's Michael Afton, and he's important. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. We got through the next three sections of the iceberg. And um, much like in the last video, I'm going to end this here just to keep it as a short and digestible piece. And there's probably going to be two more parts to this where I'll go into these last few sections here, which supposedly are really hard, which like Grim Foxy Howl... Uh, I don't know about that one, man. But uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one.